Right, so obviously it, to, 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 to be able to give a proper comparison between the two, I think it is important to discuss about the significance of this test when it comes to fertility or assisted conception. But uh, we, we will find out that they do have other potential uses and some of which are quite recent through research and we'll probably hear a lot about those in the future. So if we start about fertility and assisted conception, the first thing is which of the two tests is really a better test for checking a woman's ovarian reserve? Or in plain terms, the egg stores. That is what we're looking for. So AMH is anti-Mullerian hormone. Um, you measure it in the serum, so it's a blood test. So it's very similar to, to, to FSH having a blood test for it. Um, if we start about fertility and assisted conception, the, 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 the two tests have been used in order to give us an idea of how, 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 let's say, one would perform during fertility treatment, like IVF treatment. So that is really how, how these two tests have been used a lot. Uh, and ideally, we would like to see a test which will tell us which women have a good chance to have a baby through treatment and which ones don't. I will disappoint you there because if you have a look here, you will see that neither of them is actually good to tell us that. And we shouldn't be using this test or either of these tests to decide or to exclude perhaps somebody from trying a fertility treatment. So, for example, if you have a look at the AMH, now, in order to understand this graph, I mean, some people will be familiar with this term, which is AUC, and I'll just say a few things about that for people who are not very familiar with it. The area under the receiver operator curve, or simpler, in simpler terms, the area under the curve, is a, one of those tests that the medical science has, or the medical research, have retrieved from engineering. And what that test actually does it uh, measures the accuracy of a test, how good it is to predict an outcome. So, for example, if you look at um, this particular number, if this number is 0 0.5, what essentially means that it's like tossing a coin, your test, when it comes to the outcome. Yes? So it's the same thing. It's really not doing anything more than chance. And, of course, if it is 1, it means it is the perfect test which we all know does not exist. So, for example, if you look at AMH for predicting live birth during IVF treatment, you find that the, 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 the area under the curve is 0 0.6. So what does it mean? That if you have an AMH result for a woman, you could say with confidence of 60% whether she will have a baby or not. So that's not really very good in matters of predictive testing. However, the two tests have been used for IVF, for prediction of a performance during fertility treatment, but not to tell us if one will have a baby. They have been used to tell us if one will perform well. And in terms of IVF, that means how many eggs we'll get. Are we going to get enough eggs? Are we going to get enough eggs to get the job done? So if you look at these two tests and you were to compare these two tests one against each other, we will see that there are some differences. And from all that, let's focus on this sort of column here, which actually has the area under the curve. So we'll use the same thinking to, 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 to reflect on that. So what does this say? It says that if you were to use your age, one's age, a woman's age, to make a decision about whether her ovaries will not do well, the chances are 6 out of 10 you'll get it right. If you were to use FSH, that goes a little bit higher, 66%. So two-thirds, you will get it right if you have an FSH measurement. And if you use an AMH, you will do better. You'll have 8 out of 10. So pretty much what AMH will tell you for a certain woman is with an 80% accuracy is whether we are at risk of not getting enough to get the job done. Interestingly, if you were to combine age, AMH, a scan result, which is counting the follicles, and FSH, you see it actually doesn't really improve it anymore. So actually having just the AMH will do. Other things that this test can help us with, uh, they can test us to predict the high response of the ovary. So it's not just the low response, but also the high response. 
And that is very important to us who practice IVF treatment because we know that with the risk of high response comes the risk of a potentially dangerous or even life-threatening condition called OHSS or ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. So for us here in Bornholm, anybody who comes to have their IVF treatment, they will have an AMH test. And the reason we do the AMH test is because we, we find it very useful to identify the women who may be at risk. And safety is very important. So it's not just success, it's also safety. There are other uses of the two tests. Time to the menopause. Notoriously, many of us will, will, will tend to use FSH. And if we see the FSH slightly being out of range or rising, we start to think that this woman is getting there. Although nobody would be able to say really when the menopause will truly come. And that is because, of course, FSH has a low accuracy for that, but MH is not that better. There's a lot of enthusiasm out there for MH, but we're still not there. Another aspect of, another benefit of this test is actually for diagnosing co endocrine conditions. PCOS, very common, very common complaint, complaints related to hormonal problems come to us, and I'm sure that in primary care that's a very, very common, you know, reason for visiting the doctor and asking a lot of questions. Uh, one of the challenges with making a diagnosis of PCOS has been we need a scan because the scan can show perhaps polycystic ovaries or can show a high number and a very high number of follicles. What we know nowadays and it's becoming more obvious we're not there yet but there's been actually research to say that you can use AMH instead of your scan. So if you have a woman who, who has irregular periods, let's say they come every two, three months, and you suspect PCOS, it is possible to actually use AMH instead of a scan. And of course that, I, I would expect, in the, primary, in the primary care could be actually very useful. Uh, just to, 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 to go a little bit more into these numbers, um, they, 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 they discriminated this research between young women, old women, like up to 35 or more than 35. But essentially what they have shown is that if one were to use the follicle number per ovary, so we're looking at the scan, it's actually very accurate, 9 out of 10, to actually predict PCOS. Yes, to be used for PCOS purposes. But let's see at AMH, you see, 0.9 as well. And for the older group, we actually see that the AMH becomes a little bit better as well. So one could, one could use two out of the three criteria, the regular periods or the extra male hormone criteria plus AMH to make a diagnosis. We're not there yet because this has not yet been incorporated into guidelines, but it is getting there. That is something which FSH can't really help a lot. I mean, if you think about PCOS, quite often FSH is normal, maybe on the low side a little bit, but really what FSH is useful is to exclude other endocrine conditions, not PCOS itself. If you look at rare conditions like this one, hypo-hypo, we call it, I think that's the way, in, when I was in medical school, everybody was calling it hypo-hypo. It's too, 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 too long a word, but essentially what it means is there's no signal from, from above. I mean, AMH will not be useful there because uh, FSH quite often is, is, is on the low side for these women because there's lack of signal. So if you use it to make a diagnosis of an uncommon condition, sometimes AMH is not useful. Although it would still be useful to tell you how many eggs you've got. Another uh, one of the very recent, let's say, uses of this test is about testing about the egg reserve before and after an intervention. So I'll give you an example. A woman go, uh, you know, has cancer, she's going to go through chemotherapy. Can we use this test before and after to make a judgment how many, what was the damage of chemotherapy to her ovaries? Or let's say a woman is about to undergo surgery on her ovaries because of endometriosis, perhaps. Can we actually use this test to, to make a judgment before and after? And that is early days, but it appears to me, it appears to me that AMH is likely to be more helpful there. There are some other aspects of the two tests which I think one needs to consider. So let's think about the practicalities. Practicalities. It can be done at any time of the cycle because we have actually found out that there is no significant variation in the test. 
We think that any time of the month is good enough. That's very, very practical compared to having to wait for the second or third or fourth day of the cycle. Um, so I think that's an obvious advantage of the AMH. Another aspect of the FSH, which sometimes is inconvenient, is the fact that it, what we call it has a pulse. If you think about the physiology of FSH, it is not static, it has a pulse. If you repeat the test 20 minutes later, the result will be different. And often, one should probably check other hormones like estrogen, estradiol, to make a good judgment about FSH. Now, obviously, for the purposes of qualifying for IVF, I don't think anybody bothers with estrogen, but actually, scientifically speaking, one should. So if you have a look here at this line, which is estrogen, and this line, which is FSH. So what happens often when the ovaries start to waste, they start to waste, the, the signal becomes more intense. And because it becomes more intense, we tend to start producing more estrogen. And that keeps the rise of FSH under control. So if, let's say, you have a woman whose FSH is normal, if her estrogen is normal, she is somewhere here. But if her estrogen is risen, it means that she is at more advanced reproductive stage. So pretty much we should be testing FSH in combination with other hormones. It's more complicated then. And what about cost? Well, cost always the argument has been that AMH is more expensive. I'm not so sure that will persist for long because it's also becoming very popular. You also have to consider that with this one you get one test and that's it. While of course with FSH quite often you have to repeat because we give the benefit of a doubt. Some people will do with other hormones as well. It can actually become as expensive. And of course, what is more doctor friendly? Well, I guess it's difficult to say because doctor friendly is probably what is easier for the patient. If the patient is troubled about something and has to do a lot of work for it, it, it has a knock-on effect on us. But I can appreciate that we're all comfortable with FSH because that's how we learned our physiology. And AMH was not there. Probably even nowadays, if you go into a medical book, AMH will be there, but it will be extra to FSH. It will not be the prime, the prime culprit. So this is about the AMH and FSH, and I think overall we'll see in the future a lot more applications for, for mainly AMH. This is just to describe the experience we had here at Bonhol with AMH. So it was about 2012 to 2014, this transitional stage where we introduced AMH in our practice. And we have seen some changes in our practice here with regards to fertility treatment IVF. So for example, we have seen that we were using fewer drugs. So more likely with AMH. Uh, we were also having fewer women, let's say, with, with suboptimal stimulations. We have start to preserve more embryos, and we had a marginal benefit on live birth as well. Uh, so our experience is actually very favorable with AMH overall, but please do not forget that it is actually a more friendly, a friendlier experience as well, because people use less drugs and they have as good at least an outcome. So I hope that all was stimulating. Um, any questions, of course?